All right, then. That was that match. Uh, this group's decided. That ended up pretty well. Well, the first well, half. The group, yeah, well, the group is not yeah. quite wrapped up. First yet. half, yeah. And Michael Bolt made a very good point uh, during the, well, while we were off with the commentators, that actually Pasty was already guaranteed to go through, no matter how they did in this match. Uh, so that's why they were able to bring what is a little bit more of a uh, comedy weaker setup. You can make a good MR team, but that really isn't one of them. I was just about to say, was this a good or a bad? I mean, this had hacks. First time we've really seen hacks in the tournament. We had a few sellouts, we had harbingers. Uh, was it a bad setup? Well, actually, one of our experts, uh, Shadu, is actually the premier uh, authority on armor hacks. It's true. Uh, if any of you have seen his YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think the armor hacks did well, especially against the comedy teams. But I would love to see them against a real team, even though I'm not sure they're the optimal setup. Yeah. Right. You don't see a lot of armor hacks in the tournament um, because they, on TQ, rely on uh, signature radius, mm -hmm. which doesn't help you as much in the tournament when you're facing mostly medium-sized guns. All right, so it was uh, not a terrible setup, but also one that you probably won't be seeing tomorrow. I would not expect Pacey to bring that setup when there's actually a must-win match. All right, all right. Uh, was this two rush teams then? Or was it a bit of... So we're two brawl teams. Yeah. Yes, that would guess was, it's a good way to put it. Neither of them are particularly fast, but they do do close range damage. Right. So why are we not seeing as many uh, Amar ships or lasers this tournament? The slowness of a lot of Amar ships is a big problem. Yeah. Um, they do a bit less damage in general than, say, a Mimitar team or a Glenta team. I think you will probably see some Amar uh, setups out there, um, but they're not going to become the dominant setup. Although the tendency to move towards ECM might make that more likely. Yeah. I think that uh, the main reason, though, is that the elite PvP teams that are very popular in the Alliance tournament uh, don't like pretty lights. All right. Well, that's one reason. <laughs> Should we just... Quickly grab a few questions from the forums. I see we all actually have a few FanFest questions here as well. Uh, Tizian asks, uh, will FanFest be combined with Dust and Eve in the future? Yeah, I mean, we have combined Dust and Eve, you know, a little bit, you know, but of course, I mean, Dust will be really close to release, I guess, next year. I'm not, you know, involved in all that, no, no. but, you know, of course we will we'll have some Dust but it's all a big secrecy and, and, and mm. but you know, I sit next to the dust guy and, and you know, I'm gonna poke him a lot <laughs> and peek a little because bit. I wanna see some yeah. marines there as well. That's cool. So because it's of interest bigger. to us all. I mean, it's, yeah. it's the same wor world, it's one universe. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking drunk laser tag. <laughs> yeah. Laser tag laser would be tag, a wonderful yeah. dust fan fest activity, yeah. Laser tag at fan fest, at yeah. the opera house. Uh -huh. Just bring in a lot of guns, uh -huh. turn off the lights, uh -huh. you know, and just Go at it. <laughs> I'd play it's that. full of good ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, you know, I'm going to hire you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would, that would definitely be fun. Um, <clears throat> Alpine69 asks, do you think that Tech 1 battleships still have a place in the tournament? Mm. Not really. They can be used, um, but you're almost always going to have something that's at least a little bit better. Mm. Well, there is one case that we're all secretly hoping in which case a tech one, in which a tech one battleship would be uh, very effective, and that's one team is nominated as Scorpion as their flagship, and we're hoping for a Scorpion with all STML's multi-specs in the mids that is just an unstoppable jamming machine. But other than that, I can't really think of a situation where a T1 battleship is the absolute best choice. No, and I mean, you said it... Is that Scorpion just like a bit of a comedy pick, or can we see an SML-fitted Scorpion? If they actually can get together an SML-fitted Scorpion, um, I'm not even sure there's that many SML's multi-specs you'd be able to get on the market. No. Um, it would work. It would be ridiculously expensive and <laughs> die very fast if everything gets on jam, but it'd be <laughs> awesome to watch. It would be a very, very valuable ship. Mm -hmm. um, Joel Mariner uh, is wondering, um, what do you think about the, the bomber setups in this tournament? Are they any good this year? I think they are. They're very vulnerable. The bombers can die really quickly, and that's the trouble. You really need to be able to prevent the opposing team from doing damage to your bombers, which there's a number of different methods for doing it, but all of them are very hard. Yeah, I think a lot of teams are used to the bombers. They've been very, po very popular in uh, previous tournaments, so they all have practice against them, and they all know how to use them. Mm. So they're not really especially unique, and what you're mostly looking for is to surprise the other team and pick something that they're not going to have a lot of time to work against. Uh, is it a difficult setup to play in as a logistics pilot? Yes, you have to mm -hmm. be very fast on the reaction time. Yeah, we actually saw a match uh, 
I believe, last Saturday, in which a team uh, had an excellent bombing run on the other team and uh, switched, their, switched their damage, I believe, three times before they actually put down their primary just to trick up the other team's logistic pilot who, who had to wrap up, wrap up like six different ships. So. All right, but I mean, yeah, it, it, they are a bit difficult. And you just mentioned that bombing run that started out really wonderfully but was just never really mm -hmm. uh, punched through. But, but they are a fun setup, though. Uh, just to quickly remind you, we do have a contest coming up for this uh, next match uh, where you will be able to uh, win this uh, Logitech uh, wireless mouse. Uh, it is the Perihelion versus Severance, uh, and you can go to the competition part of our webpage uh, to check it out. Uh, and that is a cool prize. Uh, we have laptops, we have gaming cards and all that stuff. and We have kisses from you. Kisses mm -hmm. from me. And we're not getting any of it. I really well, want a Logitech mouse. The, uh, the commentators in the booth, the cave, actually get to use them, but uh, they will soon be taken away. So. And they get a free supply of Quaif. Yes. yes, exactly. They've Which been is, taking advantage of that, apparently. Yeah, I would actually like to have a shout out to the guys in the cave. The tournament set up here, the way the studio is set up, they can't leave for the entire period till the break. And with all that Quaif in there, they're uh, real heroes with their uh, perhaps bathroom usage. So. Or if, unless they're just refilling Quaif bottles. Oh. <laughs> All right, yeah. all right, all right. That, 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 was, uh, that wasn't nice of me. <laughs> uh, so we do have all these, uh, all these cool things at FanFest. Um, how difficult is it to convince people to fly all the way out here to Iceland? It's not at all. I mean, fly to Iceland, this, this iceberg in the north, and drink beer with beautiful girls. I mean, everyone jumps at the chance. It's just gathering enough money and, you know, collecting pennies or whatever, whatnot, you know, you have to be here and, and, and I mean, but we are surprised though that yeah. so many people are willing to come over here and, and, and try it out. Mm -hmm. I mean, Iceland is going through an economic crisis, so, I mean, it's, it's like a third world country for your dollar or your euro, I guess, mm -hmm. so pricing is a little bit better, but, I mean, it's not, hard, not that hard to come here. I think people fly out once they realize that you're actually not bluffing about the beautiful women. Yeah, it's very all. true. <laughs> 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 I love Reykjavik. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, you know, it's, it's good fun. And, and it's we're a metropolitan happy. city, yeah. mm -hmm. even though it's really, really small. You've got yeah. everything here. You know, yeah, and it's all in the same street, basically. You, yeah. you, you, know, you don't have to take a taxi from one club <clears> to another. It's mm -hmm. all just in, within walking distance. Mm -hmm. And definitely now, if we go to the Opera House, I mean, yeah. FanFest is even downtown. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, I missed the first FanFest, but I came to the second th and third, possibly fourth as a player. And kind of how it's grown has been amazing. Because we started out basically in a big conference room. Like, FanFest was uh, the Nordica conference room. And I mean, it's a big conference room, but, but yet it, it's still a conference room. I mean, even room. before that, it was on some theater and in and, and, and Glimpar and yeah. some, some bars. It yeah, was exactly. spread out all over Reykjavik. Yeah. You know, small little, little gatherings. But yeah. And now we're looking at an entire opera house. Yeah. And we have to take all of it. We have to, I mean, yeah. it's got lots of rooms. Yeah. We have to absolutely rent every single, yeah. sp every space of yeah. that opera house. And it's huge. It is cool. Yeah. It is fun to watch. And, uh, and the only thing that I think has entirely stayed the same is that if you just walk around at FanFest and drink, you might just end up standing next to a dev who's also just having a beer that you can just chat to. Yeah, we really want to emphasize, emphasize that. We, we do not want to take that experience away. Yeah. We want to, I even had to try my best to, to get everyone off work. Mm. I really, really had to like yeah. power that through, yeah. get every dev off work early on the mm -hmm. Thursday and the Friday, yeah. to get them to FanFest, and, yeah. and I mean, the, the management at CCP really you know, embraced that and I thought it was amazing. And, and so we got a lot of de devs at mm -hmm. FanFest, and they were sharing drinks and stories and yeah. well, hopefully talking, not secrets. Talking to devs, the pub crawl with a dev is great. Yeah. Yeah, that's a new idea that <coughs> came out in 2009, mm -hmm. and we repeated it in 2011. We still have to improve on it. I mean, it's always like this chaos, Reykjavik invasion of, of, of you know, devs and, and attendees, like 300 plus, I think almost 400 of us. Mm. And we just completely destroyed Reykjavik in one evening. It was, uh, it was fun. Like when you walked <laughs> around from bar to bar, there was always a line and it was always full of fan fest goers. And you just have to like walk around until you could finally get in somewhere and then just 
Yeah, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. The, the only thing I want to do at FanFest that I'm guaranteed to do is I want to host a pub crawl every single year. Definitely. We're going to continue with that and maybe spread it out a little bit because we had everyone leave at the same time yeah, after the chess true. boxing and, and you know, true. it was like... Yeah. But, you know, everyone was Eve shirts everywhere mm. and Eve bags and Quave shirts and, you know, it was people were like, where are all these people coming from? The internet. Yeah. The internet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we're making a, you know, we're we're you know making Reykjavik ours. It is a Reykjavik invasion. We have like discounts in stores for mm. pass holders and mm. discounts on beers and everything, and trying to get you know yeah. a whole Reykjavik community to to like really, you know, welcome yeah. the FanFest attendees. Mm. Right, right in the airplane, it's like you can see FanFest Eve trailers and. Yeah. Stuff like that. And then the airplane sitting down next to people and you just go, hey, who's going to FanFest? And suddenly every person around you is just yeah. like, oh, yeah, I'm from this alliance or I, I do this in-game. Yeah. I'm a high-sec miner, all this sort of stuff. It's really fun. Yeah, all flights to Iceland are like completely booked during yeah. that time because and half of them are full of FanFest yeah. abilities. As it should be. As as it of should course, be. of course. Yeah, But it, it is wonderful. And one of the things I was surprised as, as a player was how little of the like animosity from game carries over. Everyone at FanFest is just nice. Like, yeah. that's like, no one's yelling at each other, no one's being enemies, people are just having beer and, and just making a bit of fun of each other. Yeah. I'll give a shout out to Rex and IRC who bought me so many shots. Mm -hmm. I love that guy. IRC jumped to the top of my favorite alliances list after meeting him. Uh, were you guys at war before you met? We had, in fact, invaded uh, their space with mm -hmm. the Goon Swarm. Um, and afterwards, I don't really think we're so interested in invading their space anymore. So you're basically for sale for a few shots? Pretty much, yeah. Well, that's me, awesome. me specifically. <laughs> <laughs> you're an alliance diplomat, aren't you? Yes, I, I am an alliance diplomat. All right, so uh, if you have any issues with test, go to FanFest, find Michael Bolton, buy shots. Problem solved. All right, well, that's, uh, that's a convenient solution. Uh, I do think we have a graph for the teams that are coming up, just so we can check out uh, what they are like. Let's see here. Perihelion versus Severance. I am pretty uh, much on the Perihelion Alliance uh, bandwagon here. Uh, too bad the Severance logo is a little bit small. That is actually a pretty pretty cool. And we have two logo. teams with logos. Uh, yeah, two teams with logos. This can go anyway. No one, no one knows who's going to win this one. Uh, and we do have some some money being thrown after this tournament by Perihelion. Perihelion have three wins and one loss. That's um, mm. that's a pretty good record so far, and and they're definitely going to. Uh, try and secure their uh, their spot in this alliance tournament. Uh, this is, of course, the number two and the number three of the group, so both of these uh, can technically qualify. Yeah, they're uh, fighting for their life in this one. Yeah, at this point, whichever team wins is going to qualify. Yeah, and I think Perihelion will. But I mean, we'll see. I don't know. We'll I did, in fact, have the correct pick last match. Did so, you? Uh, yes, I did. I picked uh, right. wildly. Oh, sorry, the first match wildly inappropriate. Um, but. Uh, I really feel like Sev3 Rants could make a good showing here. Uh, I don't think you're supposed to pronounce the number. What? Why would they I have a number? That way. Why would they have a number in there then? Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. It, it, I think I'll just stick with Sev Rants. He's uh, just taking them at their word, really. Yeah, exactly. That's, true. That's, true. That's how it's spelled. Can't really complain about that. Uh, you also have to remember to pronounce the dots as well if there's dots yes. in the name. No, there's no, there's no, no none of this one, which is again, that's, that makes an excellent match right there. All right, uh, let's, uh, let's go for it though. Uh, Perihelion versus Severance. Perihelion. Severance. Severance. Perihelion. All right. Two versus two. Mm -hmm. 